joining us, coming to uh -oh. the stage, is not Crooked Letter, Crooked Letter. It's the first lady of reviews, ladies and gentlemen. It's the big homie, Sharonda. How you feeling? I'm hurt. I'm hurt. Man, I'm glad I wore this shirt. Right now, that's how I feel about this P-Valley finale, okay? I am hurt. That was heartbreaking. That was heartbreaking. What in the world, man? We're going to get to that. We're going to get to P-Valley. I'm glad I wore this shirt. I didn't know that trouble was coming on with us. <laughs> oh my lord have mercy. <laughs> oh my god. Here y'all go. So I want to ask each and every one of you two. And I'll I'll start with Sharonda first. Give me your quick two minute synopsis of how you felt about the introduction of Power Book Two first episode last night. It was cool. <laughs> Okay. Well, damn. If, if, if she's going to leave it at that, I'll, I'll give it to my long-winded friend, Larry. But before I give it to Larry, let me just remind everybody, be sure to subscribe to all three of these channels. You get fired. You got me. You got Larry. You got the first lady of reviews, the youngest in the game, Sharonda. And programming note, Wednesday, we will have my guy, E-Man, coming back to the channel to cleanse my dirty channel. I've used too many cuss words, and he comes up here to cleanse it and tell us what's going on in Hollywood. So now, Larry, your turn. Give me two minutes on what you thought about power, then we'll break it down. Well, first, let me address Sharonda. So you know when someone doesn't like something, but they don't want to get in trouble for saying it? So they just say, it's cool. Or they say, it's all right. In other words, it's all right. It's cool. Wait, I need more episodes. Like, I, I said in my review, I need a couple more episodes before I can make an informed decision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, okay, well, Larry. Say. Jump on in there, Larry, because I've got some good questions I'm going to ask both of y'all, especially Larry, because I know everybody wants to know who's Larry's love interest going to be this season since old forehead Ramona is not in it. I know they want to know who's your new love interest now. I will say this about the cast. This is a beautiful cast, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, there's some mm -hmm. hotties in this cast, men and women. But Larry, yeah. let us know what you're thinking. Well, one one thing I will say is they keep they showed little clips of everybody seemed that that seemed to be coming back when they showed you know the tra you know some of the previews for the coming episodes. I don't know why they couldn't show Ramona. I mean, they showed they but showed Congressman Tate, you know. There's word that maybe Tommy's gonna show up at the funeral. You know, <laughs> we, we've seen we've seen a bunch of folks. We've seen Tasha. You know, I don't know why they just can't show Ramona. Why can't she come through? You know, man. God. man. Just, well, get, get, man get on with it, man. I, Damn it, just get on, get the Ramona. Well, Ramona is not coming back unless you see her in one of your wet dreams. So just get on with it, man. We don't know God. that. We don't know. For all we know, she God. may she may see the potential in, in Tariq the way she saw it in, in, uh, in, in Ghost. And she's like, I'm just going to go from one ghost to the other. This one's going to have a little bit longer shelf life. Then let's you know that she can't be trusted. She doesn't have good, she doesn't make good judgments, okay? Oh, mm -hmm. Here we go. Mm -hmm. I wish she on go. that one. You look like Ramona Raggedy behind. Just, <laughs> oh, I'll tell you this. Just gullible. You would like her. Oh, 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 here we go. Stop I will tell you this. Now that they're all in college, I feel good because now it's safe for me to look at Effie. You yeah. know? Yeah. 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 And she looked Effie pretty good. She looked good yesterday, too. She did. She was looking extra cute like a little around the way girl. Mm -hmm. You know, she looked like she should have been in a 1994 LL Cool J video. She was looking Not nice. Around the way girl. Huh? <laughs> Not around the way girl. Why not? What's wrong with her around the way girl? I look, I just, I'm glad that y'all talking about all these beautiful people, but where are the dark skinned women? I saw all exotic looking chicks the whole episode. No, wait, wait, look, the, 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 the counselor was dark skinned. The, the counselor and Diana. The counselor she, and Diana. What, no, what? I said dark skin. I said dark skin. Wait, the which one's Diana? D Diana was one. Diana is uh, Mary J. Blige's character's daughter. She's not yeah. dark skin enough for you. No. Okay. Well, I, I want a blackity black, 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 
Look, that it don't it it, it, it don't get it it black. don't get it don't get no black. darker than me. And black. I'm the black I'm the blackest one on Please. this screen that we looking at. And I like see I seen two people up there that were my complexion. You Who? had both of the professors. You had uh, Professor that Negro. Is that is a lie. The professor what? is like another version of Cat Grimm. No, no. What, what, what? what about the what about what about the dude? What about Tasha? Yeah, what Tasha about Tasha? Huh? Tasha, the only one. Y'all brought all these new people. Ain't nobody dark skinned. I'm sick no, of the, it. The, the, counsel, the counselor's dark skin. Tasha's dark skin. Uh, like uh, the little. Stop the it. little girl no. that the little girl that that Tariq's interested in is dark skin. Mary J. Mary J. Blige is in there. Mary J. Blige is kind of yeah. Mary J. Mary J. Blige is is Mary J. Blige is horrified. She's definitely dark. Yeah. I said blacky black black black. Not no hazel eyes. Not no <laughs> not no pearl patterns going on. Like Tasha's the only black person. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, these are beautiful, exotic, mixed looking, racially ambiguous, good enough for black, but not really black looking people. Stop it! What? Stop it! What? Come on, man. You can't go in on black folks like that. We come in all shades and and, and, and colors and textures. We only come in the exotic, light skin, hazel eye, curly hair. No. I want more. I want more. I feel I feel her on her point. Um but I, I felt like Diana was dark. I felt like the professor was dark. Mary J. Blige is dark. Tasha is dark. And um, Tamika. Black. Tamika. What about Ramona? Tamika. What about Ramona? Ramona, light skin, man. She the color the back of my head. And Tamika but is dark skin. Her soul's a little dark. <laughs> I want the main, I want love interest, main characters to be dark. You don't think that you don't think the little girl Tariq was 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 uh, no. was peeking out was dark dark enough? They, they made it a point to say that she's black and Puerto Rican. So oh yeah, they I, they did they did do they that, Larry. The they made they it means that she's double black because Puerto Ricans are already black. Oh, God. Larry, give me the synopsis. Double black. And there you go, black Larry, and black. Larry, we have a show to do, and I need you to stay what? on mission. We're gonna come back to her point. Give Hold me. On. A Give me your minute synopsis of the episode. Hold on, I'm gonna put my MMs down for this one. <laughs> Are they dark chocolate MMs? <laughs> uh, yeah, and I have to put my MMs down for this one because Sharana says she wants someone blackity black. The little dark skinned girl that Tariq's interested in is black mixed with Puerto Rican. And since Puerto Rican's already black, she's blackity black. She qualifies as blackity black. That's fine. Y'all can say I'm doing the most on this. But it might seem like I'm doing the most even for it to be power. But for the hours of television that I have to consume every week, the movies I have to consume, and I continuously see women. And I look, everyone on Powerful is beautiful, okay? But I'm tired of seeing the same looking women. Like, I don't think people realize you keep watching that stuff over and over again. It starts to get ingrained in people's heads. So, like... Okay. It's not every black person is mixed with another culture. There are people who are just black, and that's okay. But I think that we need to see people who look like us on the screen. And every time I'm watching a show, her mama white, her daddy black, her mama black, or her daddy Puerto Rican, it's, it's always something else instead of somebody just being black. Is that too much to ask for? Like, we, we exist. I know my black ass mama exists, and my black ass daddy. So I'm just saying, like, I need. I want to see more of that because it's really becoming a problem. Now, it's so so let me ask you this, Sharana. Do you do you feel like Power overdone it by trying to force too much diversity because they've got black, they got Puerto Rican, they've got Hispanic, they've got white, or do you feel like think, you? Go ahead. I don't think I don't think there's anything wrong with diversity. I like mm -hmm. that they're actually showing an Afro Latina. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> They act like Afro Latinas or Afro Latino that they don't exist either. That there's a part of a black heritage built into like the Hispanic, the Latinx community. But what I'm saying is, it's just starting to be. I just starting to feel like every person is starting to just look the same, and that's that's just my problem. Like you, you just see it everywhere, and it's just like 
there are other types of black women that exist. And it's almost, I think it's just hard enough going through life and how they show that, you know, black women are always the least desirable and how mm. they're trying to push it through the media that they have to look like this. Everyone has to be mixed with something else to be considered this beautiful black woman. And I just want, especially when it shows that are ran by people like us, I I expect more. This ain't like a show ran by white people. So, so you want to see some dark skinned FBAs on there? I I'm just saying. Now, now here's the thing. Both I'm, just, I'm not going to argue with you because because if I made that same argument, people would have stepped all over me because no, I've no, made it no, before. You, you made so, the same argument last I week. Made, you I made, made that. I you, make that argument you, all the time. Yeah, so I, he, I would just keep it quiet so that you could say it. That way, people can hear it. No, no people heard I it last week. Don't hear it. People heard it last week when you made the same exact argument, and you basically tried to say that Angela, who was light, was a Puerto Rican, so that made her black. And this falls right in line with what we're talking about today. But great, I, I, I agree with Sharonda. I'm all about the diversity and all that, but I'm also about showing the darker shades too, because I know what she's saying is true. You've seen it from the hip hop videos from back when we was kids all the way to now, and they're still slowly, very slowly trying to integrate. Yeah. But Larry, tell us about how you feel about the story. You know, I was actually a little surprised because I was fully expecting, and as I've mentioned before, I was fully expecting and willing to hate on this entire show because I didn't like Tariq. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I was pleasantly surprised that the story was actually quite good. I mean, mm -hmm. from what I saw, it, it seemed like the story is shaping up. They did a they did a, a good enough job of of really bringing in some of the elements that we really liked from Power and mm -hmm. putting those right into here. It was almost like there was it was like there was not really a big gap. It was just sort of like, okay, you like this? Cool. We're gonna toss that in there, and now we're just gonna roll with it. I will say one thing though: mm -hmm. so Rick needs to join the Dog on Track Club. Right. Everywhere he was going, he was running. I was like, every time he left the house, oh snap, I'm late, and he's running. Oh snap, I got an appointment, and he's running. I'm like, bro, you need to hit the track team or something. But <laughs> I mean, it was it was pretty good. I still feel like uh, I, you know, I feel like uh, Method Man, and I've seen him in enough stuff. I feel like the brother needs to go take some more acting classes. He's been in there for long enough. I feel like his performances just fall a little flat. I mean, mm. I, I don't um. When I, you know, some people, when you see them on screen, you're like, oh, that's so and so. And then a couple moments in, you forget who you're watching because you're engrossed in their character. I never feel like I fully get away from Method Man. You mm -hmm. know, I always feel like I'm still watching Method Man. And I would really like with Mary J. Blige. I understand it's Mary J. Blige, but it wasn't but a hot second before I forgot that it was Mary J. Blige. And I felt I was just watching her character. I didn't get that same feeling with, uh, you know, with, with uh, Method Man. So. Mm -hmm. and, and not to say that he's a terrible actor. I just, you know, maybe he just needs to go, you know, let loose. I don't, maybe he just, maybe that's what it is. Maybe he just needs to be loose, let go of it a little bit more. I don't, I feel like he's always holding back. Okay. Um, so, Sharonda, how did you feel about the characters acting? Well, I'm, let me, let me just narrow it down. How did you feel about Method Man and Mary J. Blige's acting acumen yesterday? Um, I would tell Larry that he should watch Teenage Bounty Hunters on Netflix because Method Man is actually in that. He's actually Ooh, really like you, actually. Um, it's like you. Yeah, I would definitely tell you to watch that. I like Method Man. I do. I'm I'm more on the subtle things. Like I want them to do his wardrobe up a little bit more. Like if you're supposed to be like, if you asking people for a five hundred thousand dollar deposit up front. I need you to look like you have to have money to even be amongst my presence. And I, I needed them to like kind of, you know, do stuff like that. Just little subtle things. Right. I love J. Blige's character and also to Woody Harris. They are actually the most compelling characters for me that made me enjoy the episode. Um, okay. Just because I wanted to know about their story arc. And, mm -hmm. and I also feel like for me, I felt like Power Book 2 should have started off with a slight time jump like i think that they're relying too much on the original core of power 
Like, mm-hmm. why are we going to Jamie's funeral next week? Like, right. why, why are we going to his funeral? Why are we still wasting time on this Tasha storyline? Her going back and forth. Like, her character doesn't even seem like the typical Tasha. Like, this is Tasha who literally taught Jamie how to run his entire business, who mm-hmm. came up with all the ideas to get them out of trouble. And now she can't even give the right informant's name. Like, she can't even give the right accomplice's name. It's like, I, I just think that they should have did away with most of the original cast because now they're just acting out of character at this point. Hmm. Do you do you so, feel like they kept... Now, this is what I'm hearing from people commenting on my videos. A lot of people feel like Tasha being in jail is is the glue that's holding them connected to last season. And I, me and Larry both said that if they made this story good enough, People was going to watch it because people kept right on saying, I'm not going to watch it because Ghost ain't on it. And we right. told them that they're missing out because people change actors left and right. It's the storyline, the narratives that keep the story going. So having said that, do you Ghost feel- is on it, though. Ghost is on it. That's what do they you- keep messing up with. Ghost is on it. Ghost is just no longer James St. Patrick. That's all that it is. But we still have Ghost. Yeah. Do you feel like... Um, do you feel like they was afraid to time jump because they might lose some of the original the original people that like the show? I think they were. And I think that's one of the things that's holding the show back. I think that we're we're still way too close to where we just left off with power. So it's almost like you can't even it's like you're gonna continue to compare the two because it's literally dealing with the same storyline. And so, you know, when we're looking at like they went into the backstory of Sax family. I don't give a damn about Sax family. Like, why are we? Wait, wait, with- wait, wait. Now, they called the man Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that about Sharonda and Larry? Why, why the hell he Nancy? Can, can somebody tell? I have my theory, but I want to hear what y'all think about Nancy well, Sax. I mean, Nancy calling someone a Nancy is just a it's just a slang term for saying that a dude is is weak or a girl or a sissy or something like that. It's just like it's like if you were about to go jump off of a off of a cliff into some water and a dude scared, you would say, man, quit being a Nancy, jump. You know? Mm-hmm. Or just saying you stop acting like, like a Nancy. He's an effort. Like he yeah, he's the kid that embarrasses the family and that's why he does all of this to try to win his family's approval, their worth. But I don't care about sex to really go like I don't care about sex. I would rather y'all deep dive into Tamika's backstory than me trying to worry about what raggedy sex got going on with his family. I just, I don't care. I feel you in the in the way that they did it. I I have to say I wasn't I wasn't disinterested in his family, but it seemed like it wasn't. We didn't need to know about it yet, but it's clear from the way that they're that they're they're focusing in on his character that he's going to be a much, much more integral part of the story than he was before. Like in the past, he was sort of a, he was sort of a, a a player on the, you know, just on the the outskirts of the story. He was there, he was present. He had his times where he was, where he was necessary. Whereas I feel like now he's going to be an integral part of the story. So I'm assuming that they're, they're telling us more about him. So we understand his motivations and stuff more when we, when we see him on screen, we can understand him a little bit better. And you- I think that I think that his family is going to play a role in the story too. They didn't show that interaction between him and his younger brother for nothing. Right. I mean, right. I, do, I do feel like for the first episode, I don't care. Like, mm-hmm. and I, I guess for you guys, did you like the fact that they brought his roommate from Coates? Coates? No, <laughs> no, I, I didn't. I, I don't know. There, I'm, it looks to me like they're going to try to turn Tariq and Brayden into Ghost and um, Tommy, but. Brayden has got a whole lot of growing to do. I, I, I it's got. I don't you're see how about that. The, you're talking about the basketball player. No, no remember his friend Braden. from Brayden. So oh yeah, 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 yeah. Brayden, Brayden is his friend. When are we gonna meet little dude from Shameless? When's he coming through? He's not gonna be up here. He's on um the the prequel with raising Canaan. Oh right, 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 right. Okay. I, I just felt like one. I, I think my biggest gripe with the premiere, which I I actually enjoyed a lot more than I thought I was going to, is I felt like the show teetered between trying to be more Mm lighthearted. It was like with Tariq's interactions, it was lighthearted. Like even if you listen to like kind of the 
background music that they played during Tariq, like running back and forth to school and stuff and interacting mm. with people at school. It tried to make it like this lighthearted teenage drama. Yeah. And you have characters like Mary J and Woody, Method like yeah. their characters that make the show darker. So it feels like it's just conflicting. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like Tariq was more hard. I think that was very intentional, though, because I think they want to soften up Tariq because I think so many of us hated him in power. I think they're doing that to try and to try and endear him to us a bit so that we like him a little bit more because exactly. because he's not I don't, I don't think in this series he's going to be such the a-hole that he was before. I don't think he's going to be the person that we're supposed to dislike. And mm -hmm. in the last series, he was I'm, whether they intended to or not, many of us just did not like him at all. To the point, many of us were wishing something bad would happen to him. I think they're going for the exact opposite approach in this, and so I think they're, that all that is intentional. I think the music, you know, the way they're 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 the tone and the pacing that they're doing when he's on screen. I think it's all designed to make us like him a little bit more, at the very least, not not dislike. You know, they don't want us to dislike him. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think it messes up the tone of this tone of the show feels off at times. Like it switch, it teeters back and forth. Mm -hmm. And it was well, never like on power. It was a very serious, like the stakes were always high, no matter what they were doing. I feel well, like the stakes are still high here. I mean, dudes up there hustling straight up. Trying to, huh? I mean, what, what stakes were high? I mean, he's trying to get his moms up out of jail. Mm-hmm. I mean that's pretty that's pretty high stakes if you're a mama's boy who loves your mom and she's locked up and she's telling you to go live your life. His thing is I'm trying to get you out. And he still wants to be a dope boy. And she taught him the game. And I think that they, it seems to me like they're gonna drag this Tasha in jail thing out. It does. They might drag it out to the end of the year and set it up so that when she does get out, it could put her, it could put Tariq in the middle between her and Mary J. Blige because it looks like. Tariq is going to wind up getting in bed with Mary J. Blige and that family. And then when Tasha gets out of jail, his new mom is probably going to clash with his real mama about who's going to help him run his life and his drug cartel, which is setting up for probably could be a big narrative, I think. Um, along with the, the Tariq love triangle, are we going to finally see a threesome with Tariq, Sharonda, and Larry? I'm not going to be in a love triangle with him. That's a Larry question. <laughs> you said well, they're gonna be a love triangle with, with Tariq, Larry, and Sharonda. No, 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 man, no, not with y'all in it, man. No, like that? no, with with Diana and Lauren. Are we gonna see? Are we gonna see them in bed together, or are we gonna catch them fighting each other? Not saying y'all about to jump in bed. Why y'all no. Effie out? Effie trying to get get her. Well, that's what I would say. Effie is trying to get it. Yeah, I'm thinking that true love interest. Well, yeah, so, he might he might have to forget a threesome. He might have to go in and become a uh, he might have to go with that that HBO Big Love style. He might have to buy three houses all back to back. Well, and here's he know. a little bit too much too. I'm like, girl, you don't be you don't be caping for all your students like the way you caping for Tariq. What you care? What you care now, for? Now speaking of speaking of that professor, the the, the she pecan, wants to catch it too. She yeah, wants yeah. to catch it too. What what is gonna be the story with that professor and her ex boyfriend or husband or whoever Jabari. he is? Jabari. Right? Yeah, Jabari. Jabari. What's, I just want to say it like that. <laughs> well, what's gonna be the story with them? How are they gonna get into trouble in this series? So number one, they've had a relationship together. They fraternize, and that's not nothing you should be doing when you work together in that manner. What is gonna be the the, the twist that's gonna pull them either in trouble or back together? He's gonna try and get rid of. He's gonna try and get rid of Tariq because Tariq and that professor are about to hook up about midway through the season. Huh? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> They're gonna work together on a project, and she's gonna say something slick, and Tariq's gonna say the right thing, and next thing you know, she's gonna be looking all googly eyed at him, and it's gonna happen. Man, man, I'm just telling you. Keep calling man. me out. I keep saying crazy theories, man. and they keep coming true. I think she go. They go kiss, smash something. What something. you believe it too? See? No. Why was you for Tariq so hard? Like you just met the kid. Because she knows his daddy was James St. Patrick running for oh, lieutenant his governor. Daddy, his daddy rich. They acted like Tariq came from the slums of like New York City and was just <laughs> passing hard life. No. Life. No, y'all, y'all. 
Y'all missed it. He can't, Tariq is suffering psychologically and emotionally. He was in the limelight. His, he was in the limelight because his father was about to become the lieutenant governor of the state of New York. And then his dad tragically died. They don't know Tariq did it. They think Tariq is just this poor, you sad. Like the you sound huh? like the teacher. I sound like who? You sound like the teacher. You sound brainwashed too. This is well, a that, great, that's a great... the point I'm making. I'm supporting my own argument. I'm making my <laughs> damn <laughs> argument. Exactly. That's what he I'm is. saying. I'm with he Terrence Walton on here. I'm with Terrence in the comments. He said entanglements. Yeah, entanglement. Yeah. <laughs> in, entanglement. Now, if like he got this side story. Let me tell you something. He got this little rich, white, raggedy white man, Simon, one of who their number yeah. who got to school and they got some un underhanded, dirty deal about him helping this dude pass class. Like pass Ezekiel. school. So the, the athlete. You know, you know that that's something that go on in a lot of college campuses. I mean, just real talk. Real talk. So to, so that we can get beyond power, let me summarize it with this. Do y'all think there's any truth that Effie is connected to Simon Stearns? Mm. That's a good question. I don't know. I would say no. But I think I Effie's connected go deeper than we know. Mm -hmm. Every time y'all say Effie, I'd be like, Curtis was supposed to love me. I oh, just, my God. Why y'all get that girl named Effie? What, what girl in 2020 named Effie? Effie, come on now, come mm. on. Well, you know, it's got to start with somebody who can make that name stick. And having mm. said that, ladies and gentlemen, it's time oh, to get my theory. Go, go. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Do I need to take my headphones off? I'm nervous. No, Lee Mom. I think Effie is is a serious player in this game, and if mm -hmm. she's not, her peoples are. Because when Tariq got when Tariq took that dope from her, and she said, You gonna pay me? And he just said, I forgot what he said. He said something smart and rolled off. I don't know too many people that are just gonna let somebody just roll off after they just ganked you for your dope. So I think Can she's her connect though. Do you huh? think that, do you think Kane is her connect? You think huh? I think Kane is her connect. Kanan or Kane? Kane. Kane. It, it could be. We've never seen her connect. Could be, could be. We'll, we, I but guess. I think that I think that her can. I think her situation is so serious that she can afford to go ahead and float that for Tariq and not be a big deal. Yeah, so. for that, I was like, girl. But you, you know, know, but you know, she gave it to him. Probably they wanted us to assume because of the way she done Tariq dirty last year by ratting on him to kill the competition, and she slightly liked Tariq. They like, like them and Slightly. still kind of fail, so I don't understand. You can still like them and get your dang old money. Well, you know, it's like this: when I like, when I liked my wife when I first met her, I paid for the first date. I didn't say Crystal whip out your money. I liked her so much that I paid for that first date instead of us running up out of the restaurant. And that's what Elfie just did. She paid for the first date. Simple as that. No, nah, that's a, that's the equivalent of somebody. If you go on a date with your wife, she steals your car, and then you say, "Don't worry, baby, I'll buy another one." <laughs> you can't steal the Tesla, baby. She would stole the Tesla, man. I would have. I had to clap the. He just, he, he just walked away with fifty grand worth of dough. How you know it was fifty grand? Because, because he gave you ten percent. That's he true. gave him ten percent. He said he wanted five hundred grand. He came back with ten percent. So. I mean, you just don't want some. You don't let somebody walk away with fifty grand worth of dope unless you are seriously, seriously big time, and it's not even going to pinch your pocket a little bit. So you, I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. But you she big time, and a girl was talking about she couldn't even afford her dang on books. How she big time? She couldn't even pay for books for school. She, well, she can went, afford her books. That's she, what she, Effie wants to be. I think she wants to play that role. She wants to play that role. Yeah, well, big difference too. When you make that kind of money, you can't just walk into the bursar's office and pay cash. No, be like, how you have all this money? No, you, you can't know, do that. Um, money. Yeah, you, you got you got to let somebody wash all that money. So, 